now it's time to move on to modeling the costs and we have divided the cost into parts so variable costs and fixed costs let's start with the fixed costs and then we'll, we'll move on to variable costs so in fixed costs we've got the following uh, things so we've got salaries we assume that most of them are just fixed apart from the bonus that we're gonna model in the variable costs then we've got materials and utilities apart from obviously materials and utilities used to produce the product we have maintenance rent of not own space depreciation and then external services on the basis of that and the production we've got we calculate the unit fixed cost in raw 27 so for example in january it's 18.2 and this is due to the fact that uh, we had a production of 700 and then the total cost will equal to almost 13 million. Obviously in the months like April where we have a um, higher production, the fixed unit cost is lower because we spread it over a bigger number of units. Now, when it comes to salaries, we calculate them in a the following manner. So we look at the number of people, which we assume to be 100 people. And here, obviously we are talking about just the production guy. It's not the head office. Then we look at the salary, we assume 40,000, and then we've got also social security as a percentage of salary. So all the things on top of the salary you pay, it might be also other benefits as well. And thanks to this, we get the total cost of salaries in row 11. When it comes to the rent, it's simply number of square meters multiplied by the cost per one square meter. And depreciation is calculated in a simplified manner. So we look at the total asset gross value, which is 100 million. And then we assume that on average, we're going to be using this for 20 years. So every year it's like 5 million to be put into the depreciation. So this is the fixed cost. So let's move on to variable costs. Now in variable costs, we've got the following position. So we've got materials we use to produce the, um, the product, then salaries and uh, social security is the variable part. So in this case, it will be the bonus, some external services. Then on, on the base of that, we calculate the, the variable cost, which is 23 US dollars per unit. And then uh, using uh, the previously calculated total fixed cost and the variable cost, we calculate the total unit cost, which will be extremely important to calculate the gross margin. Now, when you look in details, when it comes to materials and energy, we've got uh, three components. So raw materials, some packaging and energy. And here we simply assume some unit cost since this is variable we have to assume it so it's 10 us dollars per unit when it comes to raw materials five packaging and five energy and other utilities and we've got the units produced as you will see we assume here that we're gonna be producing as much we as we sell in a given month it doesn't have to be like this in all the slow moving consumer goods businesses quite often you would be more producing some some of the things ahead of time so this might differ so you have to remember about that now, when it comes to salaries, we have just a bonus. So we have the bonus per unit and the production. However, we also have the threshold. So threshold works like this, that if you are below the threshold, you don't get any bonus. So this is what happens, for example, in January. So we are below the threshold of 800,000 units because we just produced 700,000 units. So we don't get any bonus. And we actually get in April, for example, where we are above this threshold. When it comes to external services, again, we have some unit cost assumed. So it's a $3 and then we have the number of units. Now the variable unit cost, it's simply a sum of all the costs. So for example, if we look at the January in column I, we have 23 and this consists of $10 of raw materials, five package, energy, five, zero salaries and social securities because we don't have any bonus and then external services. Obviously, when it comes to salaries, majority of it is treated as a fixed cost and, and this is in the fixed cost unit. So as we said, on the base of that, we've got the total unit cost. And finally, which is sometimes useful, we also created the structure of the variable cost. We show here, for example, that 43% of the variable costs are due to raw materials, 25 to packaging, etc., etc., etc. In this way, you show the structure of the cost. So that's in short. Now we'll move on to modeling of gross margin. On the basis of unit costs, we have calculated in this lecture.